As far as AI scraping is concerned, a lot have happened in the last few weeks. And today I wanted to share with you the two most important things that have been introduced to the AI scraping ecosystem of Firecrawl. The first one and the thing that made me want to make this video is the fact that we have an agent that can do interactions before starting the scraping itself. Meaning that the question of being able to log into a website and doing some interactions before you can do the scraping itself has been answered. And it is something that is possible today using this agent. The second thing that I wanted to talk about is the introduction of the LLMS text, which is a new standard of making any website into clear markdown in order to go to that website and consume the information. And this is going to be especially useful if we are trying to basically prepare documentation of any library and we want to give that documentation to any AI coding editor and then from there cursor, windsurf, or any AI extension inside of VS Code that is going to help us to write our code is going to do so many less errors and using the latest updated documentation of that specific library. So today I'm going to introduce both of these things and how you can actually use them. And if you think this is useful content that's going to help you, drop a like and subscribe and let's jump right to it. All right, so before jumping to VS Code, I want you to come with me to firecrawl.dev and here go to dashboard and inside of here we are going to see how we can use the new functionality of agentic scraping. So the idea is until now AI scrapers can only go to public facing websites meaning that the data is going to be ready once we go to that specific website and all we need to do is that we will go to that website get the markdowns and then from those markdowns LLMs are so good with extracting structured data. What a lot of you guys have been asking about is can we do login? Can we do authentication, a username and a password, click on submit or login and then go to a specific page with some interaction, scrape the data and then get those markdowns into structured data. And the answer is, I think Firecrawl, as far as I'm aware, I think Firecrawl are the first one to introduce any type of agentic scraping, meaning that we will have a, an AI agent that's going to do the interactions plus the AI scraping that's going to allow us to basically get the markdowns or extract the data from the markdowns directly. Today Today we are going to see how we can use them. So let's go ahead and go to playground and here you will find that we have an agent. We can choose an example and then we are going to choose the model fire. What I don't want to do is that I don't want to just use an example and take their word for it. I actually created inside of my own website. I created a new page. If you go to my website and then type in slash login test you are going to basically end up in this page where you need to type in test and then password. And then you will log into this page where you will have 10 pages of houses. And then we have houses for sale. I have five pages of houses for sale, five pages of houses for rent. So I created this page just so that we can simulate a real life example of how we can do some interactions with the page before we start to do the scraping. So the goal, of course, is go to the login test, do the login, login, and then click on one of the houses for rent or the houses for sale and then scrape the houses. That is the goal of this specific example. And let's see if we're going to be able to do that. There is no cookie I have not developed any cookie, meaning that every time we are going to refresh the page, we will have to type in the test and the password. The username is test, the password is password. So if you want to test that with your own Selenium applications or any type of applications, you're welcome to go to my website and do that. Just don't, please don't DDoS me, please. Thank you. So here we are going to go to Firecrawl. I am going to give the website. I'm going to put it here and then I am going to choose the model fire. And here we are going to say, type in the username and the password. If you're actually working with this, you are going to work with it inside of your own VS code. So your passwords are not going to be exposed or anything. So now we are just testing. That's why I am being a bit loose with all of this. And then click on login and then click on houses for rent, houses for rent and get the markdowns of that page. So let's see if we click on run, what's going to happen. So the best thing about this is that once we actually click on run, we can see what's going on inside of here, meaning that we will be able to see it actually moving. I don't have any uh, control over this. This is not like Manus. So we can see here that it has been able to open the website. It has been able to log in. Now it should be able to click on houses for rent. Let's see if it's going to be able to do that. It has been able to do that and it basically scraped the data from that specific page. So as you can see here, it has been able to do it and it has been able to do it really fast. So that is just perfect. And from here, we can just basically extract that exact data. So it is the first time I can actually see this in this manner. And not only can we do this here, but we can also do it inside of our code. So let's go back 
to VS Code. So here we have a new project. Let's go ahead and as always create our virtual environment. Why is that happening? We are going to create a new, let's say main.py. And inside of here, we're going to go to straight to the documentation. No one writes code from scratch anymore. So let's go to Firecrawl or let's just go back here and then let's go to docs and let's go down to fire one agent. And here we are going to see how we can basically uh, get the extraction. So from Firecrawl import Firecrawl app, and then we need the API key and from there we will be able to basically get the format markdown and we are going to choose the model and the prompt so let's go ahead and do that so let's copy this code let's go back here let's paste it in here and here vmv scripts activate pip install fire oh Perfect. The virtual environment is selected, so it should recognize this. All right, perfect. So now let, let me just go ahead, go back to here and then go to overview and copy the API key. Let's put the API key in here. Let's do the same thing. So automation camp and login test. Let's put it inside of here. And then we only want to get the markdowns. We don't want to get the HTML. So let's get the markdowns. And then we're going to, the model, we're going to choose fire one. And here simply, I will ask it to log in and page houses for sale and scrape the first page. And then we are going to print the result. So let's go ahead and do that. So now everything should be happening in the background. We are not going to see anything, but it should give us the same result that has been, well, not the same result because we are choosing the houses for sale this time, but it should basically work the same way it have worked before. And as you can see here, it has been able to give me the result. If I want basically a result that is formatted, I can just take this from here and give it to chat GPT and it's going to give me the JSON formats from it. Or I can simply use extract because they also have the extract function that's going to allow us to scrape the data. So if we go back to the documentation and then we always are in fire, we are going to see that we can actually get the extracted data. All right, now let's add an API call to an LLM in order to get the structured data from those markdowns. Let's use Google gen ai so we are going to use one of the flash models because they are free so let's go ahead all we need to do is go to quick start this is ah oh, this is so much better so now we are going to copy this sample let's go back here and fix everything in place so from gen ai we are going to go get this then the client is going to be this let me go grab an api key read it quickly so get an api key from here select one of your projects create an api key let's copy it let's paste it in here perfect all we need to do is instead of printing the we are going to client that model so the model is going to be this and then the content is going to be please extract the following information and structure it from from the following markdowns markdowns and then the information that we are going to the scrape is going to be is going to be this this information the following information you just add this perfect please output as a json because that's important perfect so they just launch it of course the majority of the time is going to be spent inside of the scraping itself because we have an agent but then the ai call to flash is going to be very fast because this is not so much data and Flash can work with upwards to 1 million tokens. So this should be no problem. So here we are basically getting an error that says. So here we are basically getting an error that says a uh, scrape response object is not subtractable, meaning that this syntax here is wrong. So this is clearly a, an object. So the way that we have to access that it's going to be the markdown not by accessing an element as if we're accessing an element in a dictionary so that's good let's clean this out and let's run this again let's see what's going to happen perfect as you can see here we have our perfect json and if we basically take this and we take it to any type of json to table 
if we put it here we are going to have exactly our tables that are going to be matching the table that we have here so 201 202 203 204 5 etc 1 2 3 4 5 and these are exactly this is exactly the data that we have been able to get from this exact page that we have here so it is working correctly and it is basically perfect with the images etc perfect all right now let's actually talk about the things that they still need to address in firecrawl because this is still a first version it is very promising this is the first time i see a combination between an agent being able to go to a website and basically do all of the interactions and then uses html markdowns in order to get the data what are the little pitfalls that they still need to work on because this is still a version one of this agent I think the fact that we need to basically go through pages and get the data this is something I haven't been able to get it to work. It has been able to basically go through all the pages, but then it only scraped the last page. It did not scrape all of the pages through. If someone can manage to actually do that, just let me know in the comments. That would be perfect for me. But the fact that it has been able to go to the last page and get all the data so it does not fail to do pagination. So it works on the pagination. They just need to concatenate all of the markdowns that they need to give me back. When I worked on the extract feature because they basically have an extract feature that we can use when we use this extract feature sometimes the data is not 100 percent perfect so sometimes you have like one or two rows that are repeated but overall it works perfectly because we can actually modify our code to do the extraction without needing to go through an llm call like i just did here but with that we cannot control the llm model behind the scenes and that's why i prefer to always get the markdowns and firecrawl are perfect for getting the markdowns this is not for everybody a lot of people will be like what's wrong with selenium what's wrong with playwrights i mean come on now we're not gonna make an agent do the interactions for us before scraping for those people i would say that this is a universal agent it can work on any websites and can work with any interactions you're not gonna touch any code the only code i did here was basically the prompt in itself and then everything else was already from the code that i have copied and pasted inside of here so the only thing that i've changed is the prompting and as far as i know speaking english or speaking any language and writing in that language is so much easier than actually writing code so that's why this could be appealing to a lot of people to be able to scrape with an agent rather than actually write a selenium code or playwright code or any other type of code to scrape a website perfect now let's actually go to the second part i feel like this video is already a bit long we have already covered a lot of things so i am gonna only talk about LLM TXT and I'm going to show you how it works in the standards and then maybe at a later date in another video I can show you how we can actually use it inside of an MCP server in order to add it to our AI coding assistant because that's where it really shines. So now let's go ahead and go to search for LLM LLMs TXT just to talk about the standard itself. So it has been introduced by Jeremy Howard and it is basically a way to make any website LLM ready. Much like you find a robots.txt in any website, for example, if we go to my website and then we add robots.txt, we always find this. And this is basically uh, just a policy for people to be able to scrape or not. As you can see here, I am allowing scraping for my website. There is no problems. Reddit allows the scraping from their websites as well. If we go to reddit.com and robot.txt, yeah, actually, Oh, disallow user agents. I should actually add disallow. So I think my, yeah, this is, should be disallow. Okay, I have this wrong. I, I need to fix my website. But anyways, so you can scrape whatever you want. Reddit also allows people to scrape whatever they want. There is no problem. And the idea is instead of just having a robots.txt, having an LLMS.txt in order to make the page and Reddit LLM ready. Examples of websites that have already done that is gradeu.app, which is a library that allow us to create web applications in Python. So if we go to gradeu.app slash LLMS.txt, we are going to find that all of their documentation is ready and we can basically access it and give access to LLMs in order for them to read this library and be able to interact with it in the latest version. There are a lot of other websites that have already basically introduced this. I am going to show you you can see it by going to this directory here here if we choose tokens from pool tokens from high to uh, low we can see that cloudflare have added it hubspot prisma pinecone as well 
if we go to lms.txt, we are going to find the pine cone. So as you can see, a lot of uh, libraries and documentations for libraries have already introduced that to their own ecosystem. And if we don't find it, what we can do is that we can go to lms.txt firecrawl. And here we are going to give the URL of that specific documentation. And then we can generate the LLMS of that specific website. So here, let's go to a website. Let's say, for example, I want documentation for fast API. So let me just go to fast API. Or, or let's let's take something simpler. Let's say, for example, let's say Firecrawl. Yeah, let's let's have Firecrawl. So let's go to the documentation. Let's copy this and then let's paste here the documentation. We will need an API key. So let's go back here. Let's go to dashboard and then let's copy the API key from here and then let's save it in a return and then let's click on generate. So as you can see here, it's basically went through the whole thing. It has been able to get us all the data that we basically need from that specific documentation page. And now we can copy that data and basically go where? Go to a notepad and then we can just paste all that data here. And now if we give this data to an MCP server, that will read through this whole data inside of an AI coding assistant. The LLM will always refer to this data before it give us any answer, meaning that we can reduce errors drastically. And that is something that we can see later on in another video. If you guys want it, just comment MCP down below. And I will understand that you want me to do that video and I will gladly do it. So that's basically it. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe. It's really appreciated. If you want me to talk about specific topics in particular, just leave it in the comments as well. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.